Welcome back. A quick reminder that you're watching the Hair Sports Show, Ireland's number one source for news and entertainment on women's sport. I'm delighted to say that I'm now joined by Cahill Dennehy. We have had exciting results uh, with Sarah Healy breaking the uh, under 23 1500 meter record that was previously held by Sonia. What are your thoughts on that, Cahill? Um, I mean, that was a brilliant run. Sarah's kind of, I mean, anyone who kind of followed Irish athletics or even Irish sport to a relative extent in recent years would have heard the name Sarah Healy ever since she won kind of two under 18 European titles it was back in must have been about 2017 now when she won those um and yeah she's been kind of she's had an up and down transition as pretty much everyone does to the senior ranks um made the Olympics last year had a kind of a poor year by her standards coming out of the junior category coming out under 20s back in 2020 um and then kind of got back I suppose on the momentum train in 2021, made the Olympics, had a disappointing Olympics again for her and um, felt that the kind of stage had got to her a bit. And then I guess her races this year have been quite up and down. Um, it's quite difficult in the position she's in now because if you have a slightly off kilter run, she's competing at the very best meets. Like she was in the Birmingham Diamond League. She was at the gold level continental tour there in Ostrava last night. And... You know, if you don't get it right at those at, on that stage, it can look very grim and you can be spat out the back of the pack very quickly, which has happened to her a couple of times this year. But I think it was brilliant to see her bounce back yesterday. I mean, Sonia Sullivan, her previous personal best for 1500 was 406.9. And she's taken over four seconds off that last night to run 402.86. And I mean, to break Sonia Sullivan's record had stood, I think it was 31 years. I think it was 1991, Sonia ran that. Um, and it was one of the last underage records that Sonia had. Um, and she, she didn't just beat it, she absolutely smashed it. I mean, she took three seconds off it. Um, now, obviously, I suppose we, we qualify all this by saying that like times have moved on in terms of spike technology is much better these days than it was in Sonia's day. Tracks are better. So, but I mean, still to break one of Sonia Sullivan's national records at under 23 level by three seconds bodes very, very well for Sarah Healy's future. And I mean, it was a qualifier for the World Championships, it was a qualifier for the Europeans, all in one fell swoop, and it was a massive personal best. And I suppose four minutes for a female 1500 meter running, four minutes is the kind of benchmark. If you are if you can get to four minutes flat or four, under four minutes, you're talking, be able, you'll be able to qualify or on the, very much on the cusp of qualifying for either a world or Olympic final. And now Sarah is only like two, a little over two seconds away from that. Um, so yeah, it bodes very well for her if she can reproduce that kind of form come like the world championships. There's no reason she can't be thinking, you know, she's not going to be contending for medals with, with a time around that, but she's going to be, she's going to be on the cusp of qualifying for final if she can reproduce that kind of run come the world semifinals in July. And then at the Europeans, you're talking there's no reason she can't be thinking of a final. Again, the medals, even at European level these days, are kind of down and they're kind of, maybe they won't be won in 355, but it'll be athletes who can kind of run around 355-ish for 1500 metres would be the kind of benchmark. But again, Sarah's only 21, so to have run 402 at the age of 21 is just remarkable and uh, very much on an upward tra trajectory. Yeah, no, she's definitely had, um, you know, a, a really good junior career and I spoke to her as well about that kind of transition and, um, you know, I think in terms of her second place at the uh, National uh, Cross Country and then a fifth place at under 23 uh, European Cross Country, like they're obviously two, two good results and, and two results that she was happy with, but in terms of getting that consistency and, and also like some of these inconsistent results can kind of damage confidence like you know where does she go from here and, and how do you build that confidence um so that you maybe don't get too daunted by that world stage yeah i think it's just experience i mean usain bolt used to always say that he was terrified he was basically shitting himself when he ran the world under 20 championships were held in jamaica back in 2002 i think and it was his first kind of time on the, I suppose, the global stage. He was only 16 or 17 and he won the world on a 20 title um, in front of like, I think it was 40,000 Jamaican fans who were screaming. And he said he was never more terrified in any Olympic final that came later or never more nervous than he was on that stage at home in front of the fans with everyone expecting and screaming his name. And, but I think the lesson in that is that once you put yourself through that ringer once, no matter how terribly it might go, you come out of it better and you come out of it more experienced with how to handle those nerves. And Sarah was one of the most refreshing interviews at the Tokyo Olympics because normally 
you know, we might sit in the media and the mix zone and kind of suspect that an athlete who came in in good form has, I suppose the term is bottled it, which is an awfully harsh thing to say on the sidelines. But I suppose the, re- the real breakdown of that would be that they've let the whole pressure and the anxiety of the experience get to them a little bit. Um, and Sarah came through and she was just brutally honest and said, like, I let it get to me. You know, I, I let the stage get to me. She didn't produce her best. And she didn't actually have a bad run, but she's an athlete who's very hard on herself always. Even if she wins silver, you know, she's thinking mm, could have been better. Um, but that's a part of the big part of the reason she's as good as she is. Um, and I think, yeah, having gone through that Olympic experience as tough as it was for her, um, will have just conditioned her that when she's next at the World Championships in July, she'll feel much more at home and she'll just feel like, yeah, I've been here before. And also, I suppose, feel like she now belongs. You know, she was like some of the world class Ethiopians were only three seconds ahead of her, two seconds ahead of her last night. And the fact that you're seeing really good athletes just up the road from you, it, it, it helps you go into these championships and think, actually, I'm not different to them. You know, I've, I've raced them on the circuit. I've been just behind them on the circuit and I can be just behind them or up with them again on the global stage. So I think it's, it's obviously something that is tough to deal with when you get to that level, especially as a young athlete. I mean, she was only 20 when she lined up in Tokyo. Um, and obviously pandemic put a halt to all the, all the racing for a good year. So, so I think it'll definitely help her going forward. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think, I think what we saw in some of her kind of, less impressive races so far this year was that maybe just a little mental lapse. Um, and again, this is nothing harsh because this is something she'd probably say herself is that, you know, at the kind of the tough point of a 1500 is around 800 to 1200. It's kind of the th- two thirds marker. Cause that's when it starts getting the pain is at its maximum and you're still a long way from the finish. So you really have to dig in. And that's been the point at times this year where we saw her start to lose touch with some of the leading backs when she wasn't having her best runs and you could see at times when she got into the last 200, she had a kick, she had something left in the tank. And I think what we saw last night in Ostrava was that she really dug in after, in that kind of 60, 70% of the way into the race and held contact. And then, I mean, Sarah always comes home really strong. And so I think now that she's had a race like that, where she's, pro, I suppose, shown that, she, you know, she's mentally tough enough to really dig in at that toughest point of the race, um, it'll do absolute wonders for her confidence going forward and the next time she gets back on the line with these world-class athletes I'm sure she will be far less intimidated than I'm sure she might have been in the past. Absolutely in terms of the summer it's certainly going to be exciting and um, you know in, in terms of that time like 402 she's hot on the heels of Kira McGean someone who's also broken some of Sonia Sullivan's records so uh, shaping up to be a really interesting uh, summer for the Irish in 1500. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Kira, Kira's kind of opener to the season was probably one of the most underappreciated runs. And that was purely because she finished second to Louise Shanahan. But I mean, Kira ran a 159, 800 metres and, and, you know, had to do the hard work herself that day, towing, I suppose, Louise Shanahan, you know, 750 metres into the 800 metres. But um, I think it was her second fastest ever opener for 800 metres once in 2020, which was a weird season because it started like in August. She broke the national record her first time out. But to do that in May, you know, when you're talking Kira would have been 80 to 90 percent ready at that point. Um, she would have been just doing it off base work and training is a very, very good sign. And she backed that up with a 201 and Belfast last weekend. So Kira is in brilliant form. And, you know, I think back in 2019, which is her best season ever. So I think she opened with a 201. So to open with a 159, you know, on the road to the next world championships um, three years later, bodes very well, given that she got into that world final in 2019. And again, the standard, we should say, is just through the roof at global level. Um, you know, there's athletes running 351, 352, 353, and that's where the medal medalists are going to come from. Um, but there's no reason Kira can't be looking at it now and thinking, well, one, get into the world final, first of all. But then once you're in that 12 woman final, try and just improve on that placing, you know, and, and get up to maybe the top seven or eight positions, which just be a remarkable achievement for Kira. And yeah, I mean, the competition, even at nationals, will be brilliant to see because um, we knew Sarah was going to be a rival to Kira, as good as Kira was. I mean, she beat her over 800 metres a few years back when she was very young, probably only 17 or 18, up in Belfast. Um, but now they're kind of both at an age where I suppose they both come of age. And um, Sarah, yeah, that'd be a brilliant a brilliant domestic rivalry and it'd be brilliant to see them kind of toe the line together or in their separate heats in the Irish kid on the international stage. 
Yeah, no, there's certainly lots going on in, in Irish athletics at the moment. Um, obviously, Rashida over in the, in the States is, is doing some really uh, good stuff there across multiple distances. And then uh, Molly Scott has had some really good runs recently too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Molly Scott's indoors there was remarkable, you know, and bodes very well for what she can do over 100 metres outdoors. It'd be interesting to see if she does choose to go back to the hurdles at any point, because that was her kind of first love, I suppose. Um, and yeah, I mean, Rashida, what Rashida has done is just absolutely remarkable. I mean, she is... I mean, all the sprinters kind of knew this. Phil Healy and the rest of them would kind of have said it, that they knew whatever records they set were going to be blown away once Rashida kind of reached full maturity. She's still not there. She's still only 19, Rashida. But I mean, she's broken the 60 metres record, the 200 metres record, the 300 and the 400 national records. And I mean, there's a real sense of Rashida that she's just getting started. I mean, Phil still holds the 100 metre record, but that looks to be living on borrowed time once Rashida gets the right weather conditions and the right race and actually runs, I suppose, 100 metres because she's been kind of focusing on 400 during the collegiate system and I'm sure will again at the NCAAs, um, which are about two weeks away now. But yeah, Rashida... I mean, yeah, what she has done is just remarkable at the age of 19, especially. Uh, she's already, she's already, I think, you know, in that category where she she will and can be a European finalist. I don't know if she, the Europeans are in August this year. And given Rashida has been racing since March, I'd find it probably perhaps a bit unlikely that she will continue racing that long, given it, it's going to be a long season. But I don't think there's any reason she wouldn't be going to the World Championships in Eugene. Um, she's qualified for both the 200 and the 400, and she can run the 4 by 4 as well. Um, so, yeah, I think Rashida is, you know, she's she's a budding star for Ireland. And uh, again, the standard is just sick at global level. But like I, I was saying recently, she finished, the time she ran recently for 400 would have finished her or would have placed her fourth or fifth in the Olympic semifinals last year for 400. So you're talking if she can maybe, and that was her first outdoor 400 meter competition ever. She'd only ever run relays before. So to have debuted like that over 400 and the way she's running over 200, you have to imagine Rashida, you know, if she freshens up and goes into it, because she'd already run a relay that day as well when she, she ran that 400 meter time. So you would have to imagine Rashida is capable of going low 50 seconds um, in the right conditions, you know, going into it with a taper from training. And I mean, if she's running in that territory, you're talking, there's no reason she can't be in like that eight woman world final. Um, probably take, probably would take going under 50 seconds to get into a world final. But the fact that at the age of 19, she's at least probably knocking on the door of that level, again, just bodes so promisingly for, for what's ahead in her career. Yeah, no, she's it, it's phenomenal. Like she's um, managing to do it across multiple distances. So I think, as you said, some of it is like right times, right conditions, and obviously what she herself is gonna is gonna focus on. Um, in terms of the national championships, it's the hundred and fiftieth uh, national championships this year. If you had to pick uh, three athletes for people to watch out for, who would they be? Oh, that's a tough one. Um... I guess it depends who comes home. I mean, Rashida will be home at that point, so you have to start with her. Um, because yeah, I mean, again, if there's anyone in Irish athletics who can kind of transcend the sport and sort of enter that category where, you know, they're on first name terms with the Irish public, the way Asanya or Katrina was, um, or Dervil or O'Rourke was as well. Um, it is it is Rashida, and hopefully she can get there in the future. So yeah, I'd say come out to watch her, and then. Beyond that, I mean, you're down to the, the usual stars of Irish athletics. Thomas Barr has won God, God knows how many. Oh, good. <laughs> Thomas Barr has won God knows how many um, national titles at this stage. So he'll be another to watch. I mean, he'll cruise the victory, obviously, at the national championships. And then beyond him, I'm trying to think now, I think he, in that, I suppose I will say in general, the women's middle distance is going to be outstanding because... Um, it kind of depends that sometimes athletes have to race nationals unless they have a medical exemption, but they kind of have the freedom to race what they want. So you might see some of the 800 meter runners running the 1500. You might see some of the 1500 meter runners stepping down or moving up the 5k or whatever, just to kind of mix it up or to maybe dodge their big competitors sometimes. Um, so I think the women's eight and the women's 15, depending on who runs what, you're talking Louise Shanahan, Nadia Powers just coming back from a stress fracture, so hard to know what shape she'll be in. Um, but yeah, Kira McGain and Sarah Healy both flying. So I think amongst that kind of crop of athletes, you've Georgie Hartigan as well in there who, who's flying at the moment. So amongst Chief or Clary Butner. So amongst that crop, depending on which way they go, if a lot of them end up in the same race at nationals, that, that could be the race of the weekend. 
Yeah, in terms of the middle distance, it was really exciting last year in the 800. Like there was five or six athletes down at, um, you know, really, really similar times. So something we're certainly looking forward to seeing how it shapes up this year. And obviously the 1500 with Kira and Sarah going head to head in that.